Now, when you're off grid, it's an attitude of you use it or you lose it. So basically, what happens is the energy's got nowhere to go. So you know, you've got your you might have a PV inverter or grid connected inverter or AC coupled inverter, and then you could have panels direct to batteries, depending on how the system's designed. What happens when the batteries are full? The energy's got nowhere to go. So what the Victrons do is they do a frequency shift and they control the grid connect inverter or they tell the MPPT that there's no extra, we don't need any extra power, batteries are full and they turn down. So it sounds pretty simple. Uh, and a lot of people think, oh, you know, my panels are broken because everything's just turned off. Um, batteries 100% turns off and sun's shining. So to get access to that energy, you need to turn things on. So what I always do when people call me up and say, hey, Mike, you know, this is not working, it's broken. I always say, go turn on a kettle or a jug, um, something like that to get it cranking and you'll see the panels ramp up. They provide enough energy to provide the load. Once the load's handled and maybe that kettle or jug, the, the water stopped boiling, it turns itself off. Once it turns itself back off, the panels will ramp back down or charge the battery up or anything come out of the battery in that period of time. And then the panels will turn themselves back off again. So it's done. So that's the, with, with off grid, it's use it or lose it because the energy got nowhere to go. We're a grid connected system. And that's why I'm actually a really big fan. If the grid's available, um, forget about the money and the financials, but if the grid's available, you can actually share that excess energy back to the community and back to the network. And so your system's going to keep producing solar. And it's also, it acts a lot, re reacts a lot faster for you when you turn things on and off. When that when that solar inverter is just really cranking flat out, come back to the grid and you turn something on, you know, you'll take that energy. So yeah, if you don't have the grid available, you know, go off grid completely. But if the grids are available, I highly recommend use it. It's one of the cheapest generators you've ever owned, and you can do a lot more smarts and stuff with the system uh, and for backup and things like that. So, um, so that's how that works with the the AC coupled and and that PV inverter. Why I like to use them is it allows you to put your batteries and your inverter down in the shed. A, a lot of people going off grid, they'll buy the shed, build the shed, put the batteries and the solder down there. What it allows to do with this AC coupled system is you can actually then put more solar panels up on the house. And it tend to really works well with an off-grid system because when you're going off-grid and you design, you normally build your shed and then it might be two or three years before you get to build your house and make that happen. So really you don't need all that extra energy up front. So you can put your batteries and all your componentry off-grid stuff in one shed, put some solar panels on that shed. And as long as you run an AC cable and the way we like to normally do it, is you run the AC cable, makes you put data in that cable in the trench as well. And so in here in Australia, you're going to put your AC cable 600 mil under the ground. And then basically you can put your water 300 mil above that. So if you're digging a trench from water between a house and a shed, and it sort of just works on lens to itself. Most people put their shed down, down below, house up top. So therefore you can catch your rainwater on the house, have a pipe that runs back down to the shed, and you can store more rainwater down there. And the other thing you do is I'd highly recommend, we've had a few customers do this over the years, is have two pipes, one coming down with your water, one going back up, that you can actually pump water back up to the house in the middle of the day. And this is where we'll get into the smarts and what we'll talk about this stuff here. So when we're talking about that, you use it or lose it in an off-grid solar situation. Now, I was actually um, having a chat with a customer yesterday. Now, Home Assistant is... Something that's mainly used for smart devices and it can integrate with your Victron and your off grid products. And it's a really, what's really good about Home Assistant does take a little bit of technical knowing, but it is quite simple if you're technical about this stuff. Um, you can integrate it with your home solar system, do some really smart stuff that when your solar is doing a certain amount of load, it can turn things on, turn things on and off, and so on and so on. So, Home Assist is really good for things like that. Uh, the other one is Node Red, which this is another really good one, which works with Victron and flows and getting the Victron to do things. It's a little bit more complicated than Home Assist, but if you've, it is quite basic from a programming point of view. It's a program that allows you to do a lot of smarts. Now, if you're someone that just really wants something simple, now these are the ones I use, and we'll just talk about this here from pumping, pumping water. Now, depending what AC coupled inverter you use as an example. So if you put a Fronius up or a FEMA, we use here in Australia, ABB, they're really not that popular in the States, um, those AC coupled inverters. I'd love to hear, put in the comments below if you're from the States, um, what AC coupled inverters are mainly over there. I know there's a lot of solar edge and end phase and things like that. 
more the high end. And pretty exciting. We're actually going to the States in the new year, which is pretty exciting. We're going to be running one of our DIY, DIY solar workshops in the States, which I'm pretty pumped about. Um, so, yeah, so with, with these ones here, you don't really need to integrate with Victron. You can. Um, there is a bit of software you need to upgrade in your Victron to be able to use these smart home plugs. But what these allow you to do as an example from that water, I like to use these. And I pretty much use them on a timer because, you know, really simple to use on a timer. You can really predict that weather. So what the way I use them for water as an example, you can sort of have a look. Most of the systems we design, the battery is going to be full about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Once the batteries are full, I normally have, as an example, so in this situation, we turn the pump on where we could pump water from the shed all the way back up to the house. And they're just a plug that plugs into a power point. So as long as it's got the internet and you can control this on and off, you can also do it with the hot water. One really good thing about the Victrons in an off-grid situation, they have a boiler output. So you can do some smarts with a Victron. You don't need to buy one of these devices. But with these smart devices, it allows you to turn loads on and off in an off-grid situation and take advantage of the excess power. So pumping water is a really good one. Heating hot water um, is another one that you can actually do with these smart links. Now, what I really love about the Tura, or Tia, whatever you want to call it, um, compared to the Meros. Now, I've actually used a lot of these Meros products, but they're only a 10 amp plug, uh, which basically means for a hot water system, most hot water systems are going to be 15 amp or could be even 20 amps. You can't run those in there. So in Australia, I haven't been able to get the Meros 15 amp plugs. Um, but these two ones actually got some smart circuit breakers. Using these smart devices in that off grid and to do things like you can turn irrigation on. So either pump water up to use later on, turn your irrigation on. And if you're thinking about the, the pumping water up, it's just another battery. You know, you're storing the energy because you can get the energy back later on. Um, we've got some customers on some really tricky smart stuff, trying to put hydro pumps in the water when it goes back down, comes down the line to try and recapture the energy. Um, something, something great you could do. Uh, irrigation you can turn your irrigation on so and it's one of those things as well that um with the meros i know you can do this you can actually do sort of weather predictions and things like that so you can sort of read the weather um with all your home assistant smart stuff and so if it's raining it won't turn that smart plug on so if you use it for irrigation and ideally in an off-grid situation where you know you, you don't when it's raining you don't want to water your stuff anyway and use the pump irrigation your batteries are not going to be full so you're not going to be taking advantage of that. So there's a lot of really smart things you can do with this, these smart plugs and um, take some user excess energy. Otherwise, you're going to lose it in that off-grid situation. So, um, yeah, something to think about there. So with the Home Assistant, what I really like about Home Assistant, we'll just flick back to that tab there. Um, what I really like about the Home Assistant is it actually works on a local IP. So you buy yourself a little NUC, a little computer, you know, the low cost Raspberry Pi or something like that. And you can do everything locally on a local network. So if the internet's down and it's ideally, you know, a lot of off-grid people want that whole self-sufficiency, um, whole self-sufficiency and not be connected to the internet and have all that sort of connection to the outside world. What I love about that home assist is once you get it set up and you're using all your local IPs and things like that, you don't need to be connected to the internet. You can run it all remotely and locally. Um, and the only reason you'd want to have a connected internet, if you're not around, you can do it. Uh, same with the tour. They do a lot of smart cameras and things like that. So that's basically if you did want, you know, contact with, um, yeah, want to have a look at your smart cameras and stuff when you're not there, you're going to basically want the internet and connections like that. So, so something to think about. So I hope that's answered everyone's questions. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found the content educational and inspiring. If you got something out of it and you think you know someone else that would actually also enjoy it, we'd really appreciate if you could share the link with them and encourage them to check out our channel. Together, let's embrace the power of sustainable living.